Thank you, Erin, and thank you, St. Beats, for hosting this wonderful event, lecture recital that we can all learn from, um, music of women composers for the organ in honor of Women's History Month. We are gonna be able to um, feature four of our finest organists, four female organists from the AGO chapter, and they will be um, presenting to us um, some of the music that they have discovered of women composers. We hope to learn a lot from this and to be educated by learning a lot more literature, and we're very, very grateful for the time and, and that they have put into this for us. We hope you enjoy this music, and we again thank St. Bede's for hosting this program for us. is based on hymn tunes, the first by Brenda Portman, who is a young composer based in Cincinnati, Ohio. I first met Brenda when she came here to visit some friends and played a concert at Bruton Parish. And uh, shortly thereafter, we were celebrating the 300th anniversary of Bruton Parish, and we held a competition for new hymns based on texts that we had written for the occasion. Um, and it turned out she was one of the winners, and it's our paths have crossed since. Um, Mary Beth Bennett is well known around here. She is an organist, improviser, composer, based in Richmond. She's on the faculty of the University of Richmond, and organist now at Second Baptist Church. We first met at USC when we were both in the graduate program there. She's a remarkable musician. And the piece I'll play is uh, quite simple, but absolutely beautiful. It is based on the, the hymn tune Bridegroom, which is usually sent to a, set to a text about the Holy Spirit. But she takes the initial motive, uh, the initial part of the melody, and then goes off on this beautiful melody she creates herself. Marianne Kim is, uh, was born and raised in Korea, but now is in Chicago, the Chicago area. Um, and she is a pianist, organist, harpsichordist, and she often infuses her music with various more popular aspects. In the case of the piece, I'll play some jazz influence.
next two pieces are a little bit more concert oriented, although they can certainly be used in services, especially single movements. The next piece is by Gwyneth Walker, a well-known American composer. She was originally on the faculty at Oberlin and uh, retired in 1982 to concentrate solely on composing, settled in um, Braintree, Vermont, where she lives now, composes for many genres, uh, and has composed a handful of pieces, well, a little bit larger than a handful of pieces for organ. And the piece Sanctuary that I'll play the first movement from was first uh, commissioned for the 2010 Washington DC AGO convention. And I was actually at the concert at the premiere at the Annapolis Naval Academy and really thought the piece would be great to play particularly at the Bruton Parish Candlelight Concert um, and never came across the music um, at that point. It wasn't published yet. Uh, my colleague Janelle Will found it uh, for our inaugural concerts at Bruton a couple years ago, and I especially uh, thought that these would be appropriate for this venue, for this concert, and I'm playing the first movement. The piece is a three-movement work uh, based on three different definitions of the word sanctuary. The first movement is the traditional church sanctuary, Second movement that I'll not play is about a nature sanctuary, particularly a bird sanctuary. It includes bird calls, it's a lot of fun. And the final movement is sanctuary as a refuge, a place of peace. And I certainly commend the entire work to you. Um, Cecilia McDowell is the composer of the last piece I'll play. She's a dear friend. She's a London-based composer, um, well, well established, began composing rather late in life after raising a family. Um, and she is especially known, I think, for her choral works. Um, but she has written a number of pieces for organ. In fact, there's just a CD released of all her pieces for organ. Uh, and these O antiphon, o antiphon sequences were commissioned for the 2018 AGO convention in, Saint, in Kansas City and premiered there. There are seven movements following the sequence of the O antiphons, and I um, will play the first and the fourth movements. The first is O Sapientia, or O Wisdom, and she writes the text mightily and sweetly ordering all things. And the fourth is O Clavis da um, David, O Key of David, you open and none may close.
Thank you, Becky. I just learned a lot of great new lit. <laughs> it's fabulous. Thank you all so much for the opportunity to be here. While Karina sanitizes the organ for us, I wanted to show you um, some of the volumes from which I'm playing. I'm going to be playing from the Oxford hymn settings for organists, the Epiphany version, and then um, uh, go-to favorites for me are the Augsburg collection, the Augsburg Organ Library, and I'll have um, photocopies of those in the in the uh, binder from which I'm actually playing, but I wanted you to see that. And then also another piece will be um, uh, Meditation on Kofin by Mary Beth Bennett, from whom you've heard a couple of pieces already. Um, and if Corrine is ready, I will be doing most of my introductions from the uh, console. So... So my name is Holly Sunderland, and um, when Deborah Carr asked me to do this, I was pleased to um, offer this educational opportunity for my colleagues. And so I won't be playing complete places, uh, complete pieces in all instances. Let me slide around, and you'll know that I'm here because I'll still be talking. The, uh, the program that I've chosen today um, features the works of living female composers who have arranged quality chorale preludes based on well-known hymn tunes. I hope to emphasize the central place of hymnody and worship. I also hope to share a little bit about the commission process, which could easily apply to any of the composers represented in today's program. My first selection is by Marilyn Beery. She is uh, born in 1959. She's a working church musician, as is her husband, James. Um, like me, she has a particular affinity for chorale-based literature. And the piece I'm going to share um, is based on a 17th century chorale. It's O Jesu in Sus, and it's famously harmonized by J.S. Bach. It can be used liturgically during Christmas, during Reformation, or Pentecost. Um, I will only share an excerpt, and for my colleagues who might want to embrace this piece, I would say practice for excessive finger substitutions. It can get a little gnarly. The second piece I'm going to share is Fallet will ich dir geben, and that's by Emily Diemer. 
Um, it reflects the uh, liturgical season in which we are immersed. Lent going toward Holy Week, Palm Sunday to Easter is the sequence of uh, chorale preludes that I'll share next. Um, Emma Lou Diemer was born in 1927, and this hymn tune, All Glory, Laud, and Honor in English, um, is uh, a reflection for me of the chaos and the noise of a crowd scene that would be um, processional in nature on a Palm Sunday worship. It um, may be useful for a processional or a postlude on Palm Sunday. Um, the Augsburg Organ Library Edition has terrible page turns, colleagues, and so I recommend that you craft your playing copy to simplify your life. Um, and also, because I was unable to find a recording of this piece, I plan to play the entire work. Um, so, Emily Deemers, all glory, laud, and honor.
cool piece. And thank you for letting me share it on this marvelous instrument. All righty. I have all of my pages open now. The next selection is a new commission that has yet to be published. Um, I was introduced to the hymn tune Kofen in even song services at two Episcopal churches in Tidewater. The music and the lyrics spoke to me, but I could not find an organ arrangement of the tune. I reached out to Mary Beth Bennett, who's a noted composer, as Becky's already shared. She's an improviser, a faculty member at University of Richmond. And I asked her to compose a piece for my husband, Martin, who's in the audience with us, um, in celebration of our 30th wedding anniversary. And Martin premiered this piece in worship during Epiphany 2021 at Eastern Shore Chapel Episcopal Church, where he serves. The text addresses the insignificance of the praise that we offer as compared to the praise of the heavenly choir. The setting is an ornamented chorale prelude. It's in the same key intentionally as the hymn. Um, though not specifically Linton, this piece could be shared during any reflective even evening services. And I share this piece by Mary Beth Bennett.
Dr. Pamela Decker's Herzlich tut mich verlangen features excessive late 20th century chromatic harmonies over a pedal cantus firmus of a 16th or 17th century chorale. Dr. Decker is the professor of organ and theory at the University of Arizona. I'm only going to share an excerpt of the first and fourth phrases of this short piece for Good Friday. I think you can tell where that one was headed. Um, the previous selections, again, are all published in the Augsburg Organ Library series. The final um, piece that I'm going to share today is from the Oxford Hymn Settings for Organist, which is edited by Rebecca Grumteveld. Um, I have chosen a Grumteveld arrangement of Puer Nobis um, because there are many texts that are associated with this tune. It's a very versatile arrangement. Um, today, it'll represent for our little Linton journey that Easter day with joy was bright. I'll play the first half of this very short piece as a hymn introduction. I'll do a little snippet of the hymn just to give you an idea how I've utilized this piece in the past. And then I will share um, an equally short second half of this piece that might be suitable for an Easter to postlid. Okay, enjoy.
I'm Diane Drury, and um, thank you so much for inviting me to be part of this wonderful program. And it's given me a chance to learn some new repertoire because my repertoire of women composers was very, very lacking. Um, I want to recommend, while she's sanitizing the organ, this fabulous book that I found. It is called Sounds and Sweet Airs by Anna Beer, and it is so thoroughly researched and goes into depth, and in, she has gone through the genealogy and all of the history of these fabulous women composers going all the way back to the Baroque era, and I really recommend getting this. Um, I found it in a bookstore in Dublin, but you can get it on the Amazon very easily. Um, I'll also share with you some of the um, collections that I'm playing from. The final piece will be Alice Jordan will be coming from a collection I have that is called Two Voluntaries on Melodies from the English Tradition. Um, of course, a really excellent resource for um, women composers is the Augsburg Organ Library, and I'll be playing um, a selection out of the autumn. An accessible um, collection of music by Jeanne Demassieu is her 12 chorale preludes on Gregorian chant themes for organ. And then a selection, two selections. I um, purchased this book because I loved it so much. Um, this is the Women's Composers album by, uh, arranged by Charles Callahan. And so I'll be playing some things out of that. Um, so the first two pieces I'll play are from that. The first one will be Bersus by Germaine Taifer. And she was one of the noted um, Lécis, um, the six organ students who were, I mean, not organ students, but the six students at the Paris Conservatory who were devotees of Eric Satie. Um, so she lived from 1892 to 1983. Um, she composed many pieces, but very few for organ. And this one is actually scored for um, violin and piano. It was written in 1913. And Charles Callahan has arranged it here. And I chose to play this piece because of its beautiful melody and the use of colorful harmonies, which distinguish her compositions. And it makes for a beautiful prelude, offertory, or recital piece. And that one and my final piece I will play in its entirety. Uh, the second piece I'll play is uh, The Regaudin by Elizabeth Claude Jacquet de la Guerre. And she lived from 1665 to 1729. She was an extremely accomplished harpsichordist and composer. And she served the court of Louis XIV's mistress. Her husband was the organist at Saint-Chapelle and a court organist, but women were not allowed to be organists in that time in France. And so she played the harpsichord brilliantly. And her life should be studied because she not only was a brilliant musician, but she was a trend-setting composer. She lived a remarkable life where she successfully navigated the ins and outs of the musical political system that existed in the French court at that time. And this also comes from the Women's Composers album. But it was originally composed in 1707 as the second Regaudin from her pieces for harpsichord, which can be played on the violin. And these pieces were considered to be the first trio sonatas written by a French composer. And Jacquet was an innovator in that form. And then I'll come and talk about a few other pieces um, before I play those. But um, the third piece I'd like to play, it comes from the Jeanne de Monsieur um, Ophélie Variations. Uh, Jeanne de Monsieur um, lived from 1921 to 1968, and she was a very talented concert organist and composer. And she studied with Marcel Dupré. She held organist positions at Saint-Esprit and La Madeleine in Paris and composed quite a bit of music, only half of which has been published to date. My first experience with her music was in college when 
I had to just play the most difficult piece ever written, and it was uh, her octaves from Cis Etude. Um, I don't play that piece anymore. I play more practical things. <laughs> and I can't even find the music for this. Um, so the piece I will demonstrate today um, is based on the oh, oh Sons and Daughters, the um, Easter, um, Easter hymn. And I'm going to play fractions of it. I'll play like a, a, um, the theme, the first variation, the second variation, um, the third variation I'm going to leave out, but it's, it's definitely doable. And then I'll finish out with the, the final variation on that. Um, and I'll come back and talk about the other pieces in a bit.
my final two pieces will include um, the first two pages from Ein Festeborg by Barbara Harbach. And she was born in 1946. And she's doing what a lot of people should be doing right now. She is working on um, publishing the music of women composers. Uh, she is Professor Emerita at the University of Missouri, St. Saint Louis. And she's a, um, composed an extraordinary amount of music in almost every genre. She continues to perform as an organist and harpsichordist as well. Her arrangement of Ein Festeborg found in the, in the Augsburg Organ Library, as well as some of her, she has several pieces in these collections. Um, a lot of these pieces are very creative in their use of imitative devices, and it makes for a very nice postlude on Reformation Sunday. And then my final piece is the Jubilation on Lauda Anima by Alice Yost Jordan. And she was born in 1916 and passed away in 2012. Um, she was a prolific composer of organ and choral music and almost all of her music is very accessible to church organists. She spent most of her life in Des Moines, Iowa and taught at Drake University. And I selected this piece because it's based on one of my favorite hymns. And it's in this French toccata-like style that I love. And at just five pages long, it is definitely a useful postlude piece that is just challenging enough and is always a crowd pleaser and it'll be my Easter Sunday postlude.
Good morning. Um, I chose five different pieces with the idea of getting as much variety as I could in five pieces. So the first one is one I like to use for a postlude. It's Takata for a Joyful Day by Emma Lou Diemer, who you heard a little bit of earlier. This Takata sounds very flashy, but truth be told, it's actually not that hard to learn. I learned it in an afternoon one day because I have a series called Takata Tuesday and I realized I, it was Tuesday and I didn't have a Takata. So I learned it in an afternoon and recorded it. So it's a lot of fun, very easy to learn. Um, I'm gonna play the first two pages, take a nice quick cut and play the concluding part. The prelude from Ethel Smythe's uh, Prelude and Fugue on O Trarikait O Herzeleid from her chorale preludes. I used this as an earlier offertory, earlier in Lent. It's about two minutes long. If you play the whole thing, it's about seven. I find separately they're great for church services together. They're a great concert piece. Um, this particular piece, there's a lot of very interesting cross rhythms. So you'll hear triplets throughout paired against just a duple meter, but it's also very slow. So that gives your brain time to comprehend how the rhythm is supposed to go. I will be using the clarinet on this organ as the solo stop, but if you take it home to your own organ, whatever solo stop sounds the best.
So next we're going to go to an Australian organist named June Nixon. And the caveat I give, she is an amazing composer. She's been awarded a doctorate by the Archbishop of Canterbury for her contributions to church music. Her serious music is amazing and fabulous and you should go look it up on your own time. For today, I am choosing a piece that she wrote as a joke. It comes from the best covered organ album of all time. This was actually a gift to me from Becky Davey for my high school graduation, so it's cool to bring it back. Um, this is a series of variations on Auld Lang Syne, and the piece is entitled Pasticcio. And if you look it up on Google, you can get some fabulous recipes for dinner. It has multiple meanings. The other one is a conglomeration of musical works by other composers pulled into a new composition. So this one, there are jokes from happy birthday, a little bit of sailor's hornpipe, and all sorts of things smushed together. In the interest of time, I'm going to smush it together even more and play just about one line from every single variation and sort of end up with a new musical composition. to something more serious. Uh, next, we're gonna go to Rachel Laurent, who is a fabulous Canadian composer, and I have many of her large concert works on my musical bucket list, but for the sake of my schedule this spring and for the sake of time, I did some research into her smaller works and discovered this little gem in Opus 58. This is her prelude. If you play it at tempo, it takes about a minute and 20 seconds, so if you have a a need for a very short piece within the context of a service, it works great for that. Or you can pair it with any one of the other things in Opus 58 if you want a more substantial work. This particular piece is beautifully crafted. It is primarily just two notes happening at any given time, but these beautiful melodies and beautiful harmonic textures come pouring out of the organ. I actually had a congregation, congregant, uh, come up after I played it in a service and was like, what was that I need to know? So it is a beautiful, magical little piece. Thank you. 
Last but not least, we're going to make a return to Jean de Monsieur, who you heard a little bit of earlier. This is one of her not so accessible works. I learned this on my senior year of college as like the culmination of my musical education there. Um, this was actually the first piece I ever learned by a female composer, so went straight for the big guns. This is a very militaristic, very bold setting of the Te Deum. I do use it for services once in a while. The Catholic Church, there are certain days where you're supposed to pray the Te Deum, and it occasionally shows up on those. Uh, as she said earlier, de Monsieur was a student of Marcel Dupre and was considered by many to be the greatest organist of her generation. Um, this piece was composed for the organ at St. John the Divine in New York City. Um, she actually wrote in her diary about it, which is how we know that. Um, this monumental work is made up of fragments from the chant that are woven together very intricately. There are ostinato patterns everywhere. Um, if you find yourself going crazy in quarantine and want to spend about 200 hours learning a piece of music, this is for you. The very opening section, a little snippet from the middle aria, and then I will conclude with the whole toccata at the end of the piece.
On behalf of the Tidewater um, American Guild of Organists, we thank you so much. Those of you viewing at home and those of you that are here in person, it's so wonderful to hear music that's new, exciting, fresh, and of all different um, levels that we can all appreciate. And um, I hope we'll be able to um, bring some of this music from the women to our, um, our repertoire that we play in our own areas. I'd like to thank again, stand up, <laughs> Becky Davey, Holly Sunderland, um, Diana Drury, and also Karina Sturdy for presenting this program for us. And I'd like to thank again St. Beats for hosting this on this gorgeous organ. So um, have a wonderful afternoon, and you'll be hearing organ music in your head for the rest of the day. Thank you so much for coming.